Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Let's see what's cooking in the workshop tonight. A couple things I want to go over with you guys. Um, one is thank you for your many responses back on email and being part of a team. There's going to be all different parts of this that's going to make this happen. Um, we need designers, computer designers, computer writers, software writers. Uh, we need engineers in different phases. We also need think tank people. We also need finance people. We also need marketing people. Let's start this puppy up. So a lot of things I learned today, um, well, after I got done work, um, right now you see light bulbs laying all around, right? You see um, I put back on the secondary, secondary B prime coil, we'll call it. We'll call the secondary prime, we'll call primary B and B prime. Top load. Light bulbs laying all around. This one's hooked up to earth ground, okay? This one here is a coil that's identical to the bottom one. It's hooked up to the other side of this ground from this light bulb. And then I just have this. I, I want to talk to you guys on certain things. I took the top load. That's humongous. This thing is huge. I punched in a hole here. Not a hole, but I punched in a concaved area there and a concaved area here. And um, we're going to take this light bulb and we're going to demonstrate some things on there on angling. The um, without breakout, we're gonna, which is hard right now because I had this really, really tuned. But without breakout, we're gonna walk and look at the angle of the bulb and how it picks up its signal. Um, also, here I have two um, of my copper rods for my capacitance, my capacitance here. And um, right now we have six bottles. We're gonna fire it up with six and see what it does. We'll leave the gap about. Uh, what is that? That's about a good half inch separation. So we should see a little breakout. That's without air. So we should see a little breakout. And then we'll um, put some air on it and see what it does. And then we'll go ahead and turn it off. And then we'll add a rod. So we'll add a seventh capacitor, which would be seven nanofarads. And um, which really these are over... I think a little bit over a nanofarad. So it'd be seven and change nanofarads. And then we'll go ahead and add and turn it on, put air on it and see what it does. And then we'll check it again with eight. And the reason that is, is um, without adding B prime, just B for secondary, what we have here is a frequency of 522.89 kilohertz. All right. The length of wire that goes around the as a winding, it's 11 inches. So it's not a foot around, so it'd be one foot around, but it's 11 inches. All right, we got turns per inch, we got 40, which I just know what it is, so I didn't write it down. 40 turns per inch. Length of wire is 518.4 feet. You can see how that's somewhat reminiscing of foot per 11, say almost inch. You can see how there's correspondence there, guys. DC resistance in the wire. You got uh, 20.9841 ohms, so almost 21 there. Your uh, weight of the wire, which is important, 0 0.4 pounds, and the Q is 297 on it. The height of this coil is 11 inches. The turns is 440 turns on the secondary. The wire is a 26 gauge, and the top load capacitance on calculations of this, not including my knockdowns, okay, is 7.856 picofarads. Picofarads. Okay. So uh, we'll do some numbers, which I didn't do, on the reference on what is resident capacitance here to the primary, but really to the inductance of the um, transformer that the draw to create the inductance into the capacitance is in relation to the top load because the top load as you add a bigger top load you're drawing more from the um, 
more inductance. And what happens is if your capacitance isn't in resonance with your transformer, then you're not going to balance out the inductance you need for your top load. I know that sounds kind of strange, but it is like that. And let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Um, another thing I'm going to go over is the primary. It is at 522.27 versus the secondary is at 522.89 kilohertz. And that means we're at a tuned, we're detuned 0.12%. So not 12%, but 0.12%. So we're pretty close. I'm at the wire down bottom here, the primary is 50 feet, 0.19. And uh, DC resistance in, uh, I guess that's milliohms, 8.33. Primary inductance, 69.822 microhenries. No, yeah, uh, microhenries. Cap size for resonance is 0 0.00133 microfarads. So that will be 13.3 nanofarads. 13.3 bottles of nanofarads. I can't get the thing to work. And that led me today in, into understanding that this capacitance is really in relationship to the uh, transformer. And that I should be focusing next on another circuit, which is the capacitance. That, see, that should go to that, come out of that to a capacitor. Maybe some resistance I guess or, or 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 something like that or I don't know resistance but maybe something more like um, a, a some diodes into some maybe slow one side down a little bit that goes into the primary meaning like there'd be resistance there'd be some type of ferrite core with some wire wrapped around it that would take the tail end and would slow it down that would give it a, a, a bigger a zing a big big zing so anyway let me fire this up stop talking um let's uh, turn off power let's turn i mean lights let's turn off some lights all right so right now we are going to check to see maybe we'll keep this light on here and we'll turn that off that's that's good because I'm going to be walking back and forth. So right here is 60 nanofarads. You can see it had some action, right? Light bulbs are lighting up and stuff. Let's go ahead and stick this rod in here. Let's create the let's crank down a little bit on this connection here. So I could stick it in there, but I'd rather have it tight. So that creates a seven nanofarads, but it's gonna be more. Remember we were talking about 7.8. 5.6 picofarads for top load compar uh, ca capacitance, but to match the primary and the secondary together, we needed a um, cap size of 13. So we're way off from what the um, calculator of the uh, Tesla coil is.
So now we got the gap tight. You can see what's lighting up. See this over here. This is all hooked to ground. You can also see we have action up there. You got light coming out. So that was adding one more nanofarad to the system. Did all that. Now the problem is I'm not going to do it right now. It's too much ozone in the room. But basically, if I add the eighth bottle, it goes down. It doesn't work as much as it does right now. So that's because I believe that my bottles are over a nanofarad a piece. And I believe that my meter is not telling me the truth. So, all right, guys. Well, leave your comments. Love the emails, love the comments. Uh, I'm gonna, I never did Skype before, and I'm going to set up a Skype. And what I want to do is start interviewing everybody. And I need to put together a list of the qualities that I'm looking for. And please, I don't care who you are, what you do for a living. If you're into this, you want to be part of the future, email me. Go to my last video, get my email email me I won't contact you right away I have lots coming in but I have financial people I have Wall Street people I have marketing people are all emailing me and that's what I was really looking to do here guys this is big this is going to be big everybody's going to benefit from it it's a team it's a team there's no I in team here and I know this you guys we are the future. We are the new Tesla wireless indoor and outdoor power company. Haven't figured a name out yet, but doesn't matter right now because <clears throat> all the experience that Ed Lee Scallon brought me, he brought me to Tesla. He brought me to heavy side he brought me to crooks he brought me to Steinmetz he brought me the Einstein he brought me everywhere to learn more about what Ed was doing because Ed figured things out in a simple way and I really can't talk much about that but I, I guess I don't know all about that also <clears throat> there's other dynamics there that are above all of us that only some people get and can I have the wheel turn with a PMH yes takes a lot of energy to do it DC current can I um, throw some Tesla stuff into it yeah but it's dangerous because you're near ground and you're going to get hurt it's more about the fundamentals of the universe that goes back to the mechanics of edge wheel and to the parts of the unknown on how you use ground like the pipe and how you oscillate the ground and what the frequency of the ground is and how can you tap in that and if you are tapping into that the top peak part of the ground's frequency say is at 